Hello everyone and welcome back to the CAD series. Now I've called this episode Odds and Ends and really it should be part four or part five of the Bodium build. However, for reasons I'll explain in just a minute, I've put the Bodium build back a, a, a video um, because I had one or two things I needed to discuss and this seemed a, a good format to do it in a kind of an odds and ends, bits and pieces kind of an episode. So first up, I'd like to address um, the issue of making the drawings available to you guys at home. One person commented that he'd set up a second or was planning to set up a second computer screen so that he could follow along and sort of, I guess, watch my video at the same time he could have the CAD software running on another screen. Now, that's a great idea and there's lots of advantages to having two screens, but it seems like a lot of effort. It would be much better if there was a place where I could just paste the drawings and you can access them and, and open them up and print them off and do what you want with them. And I've thought long and hard about how to do that and I'm not really an expert on any of this stuff. So what I think I'm going to do is use Facebook. Now I know Facebook isn't for everyone and for those Facebook doesn't suit then maybe I can email or, or do it another way. But what I've done for the time being is I've set up a Facebook group which I've just simply called Bexhill West YouTube channel. And currently there's nothing on there at the moment except a, a number of links to these videos. However, at the top of the screen, there's a files tab. And if you click on that tab, I will paste PDF drawings. And in fact, I can paste the um, CAD files as well. They'll all go into that folder so that when we work on a, an aspect of the Bodium project, you'll be able to open up the files, both the, sort of the digital CAD file and also a, a print offable file and, and do your homework that way. I hope that will be of, of great benefit to people. So if it is, go across to Facebook, search for Bexhill West YouTube channel and you'll find the page. It's a private group, so you'd have to click the little button to request some admission to the group and I'll go in there as the moderator or administrator, whatever the term is, and I'll approve everyone. So hopefully that will be just a simple place where I can give stuff to you in a digital format that you can, you can use for your work. So then, why no Bodium Build video for this week? Well, quite simply, in preparing the drawings to put onto the Facebook page, I realised that where I'd sort of very accurately scaled the original building, I'd ended up with lots of funny measurements, 21.69 millimetres and stuff like that. And I thought that the odd hundredths of a millimetre on the end of every measurement wasn't really very helpful for somebody who was learning a new piece of software. So what I've done is I've redrawn everything and kind of just tweaked all the measurements, kept the scaling sort of right. It still looks like Bodium Station, but I've changed all the measurements to get rid of the silly little odd bits that will make absolutely no difference whatsoever. So that's produced much cleaner dimensioning on the on the drawings and put those into a format that I think are better to present and share with you guys. So rather than progressing the build, I've kind of reverse engineered it all a little bit just to make the measurements easier to follow. So there's no point in me videoing any of that. That would be of no interest whatsoever. But that has delayed my progress. I don't want to move on with the next stage of the build and the next stage of the skills um, with measurements that are different to those which I'm going to share. So that's meant refilming much of the bits I'd already filmed. So if any of that makes sense, that's why there's no progress on the Bodium video this week. But don't worry, it's continuing and behind the scenes there's been some really great progress. Now, as an aside, and this sort of does also hint at why some of the video progress has been a bit slow this week. Um, in the, the weather's been really nice, the grass has been growing, and my parents have um, come across a problem with their ride on lawnmower. The problem's been developing for many years now, and the the grass cutting deck underneath the machine is rotted away and needed repairing. So I'm just going to show a couple of images here of um, what I was able to sort of apply some of my CAD skills to the repair of that machine. So here you can see the original rusty deck and here we have a very simple CAD drawing of the basic dimensions sort of pertaining to that. Now I was able to have laser cut steel PC or steel plate from that drawing 
and then it's been a relatively simple fabrication job to roll some steel bars to form the curved elements of the deck and so I've built up a replacement deck for that machine. So I just want to show you, I know nobody is interested in lawnmower repair, but just show you that these CAD skills, we might be developing them through this channel for our model making, but we can apply them to absolutely anything. So hopefully that might whet your appetite or give you some food for thought of ways you could extend your CAD skills. So those of you who have been practicing, well done and keep it up. I should expect to see some homework soon. Anyway, on with today's video and it's fairly light on content today. I'm going to focus on answering two viewer questions. And then after that, we'll look at the scaling tool very briefly and I'll show you how we can um, scale an image using CAD. Now in this case we're going to use a Pico point diagram that's available from their website and I'll show you how we can import that into the CAD system and scale it perfectly um, and then you'll have that as a drawing element that you might be able to use for track planning or whatever. But the principles apply to absolutely anything. It could be a piece of rolling stock, a building or, or what have you. Just have a look at the principles and have a practice with them. I think you'll find them very useful. So then, first up today, I'd like to begin by answering a question which was asked by Kev of Medway Peninsula Model Railway Channel. Now, Kev has been very diligently following along with these tutorial uh, videos, but he ran into a problem in that on his installation, he struggled to find this menu bar here on the left hand side of my screen. So that as I've been working through different activities and I've maybe come across here to the top left and selected a line tool, Kev's found that hard to follow because that tool hasn't been available to him. In fact, Kev has had to come up here to where it says tools and select from the drop down menu his tools. And that's a little bit inconvenient. It's certainly much easier having them here. So how do they appear here and how can you get them to appear on your screen if, if they haven't upon installation? Well, down the bottom of the screen, we've got some little icons which show the screen with a kind of highlighted green area. Now, if we look at this um, icon here, the left screen icon, you can see it's highlighted in blue. If I left mouse click on it to deselect it, you'll see that menu sort of bar there disappears. And if I left click on this icon, it reappears. So it may well be, Kev, that that's all you need to do to get your, or get these toolbars to appear. Just left click on that icon. Now, if we have a look at this uh, this toolbar, we've got what are called widgets and, or, or widget menus. And for example, at the top here, I've got the line widget menu and I can drag this out here so that it floats on my screen if I like, and I can pop it back. Now, we may or we may not want these to appear within this left hand bar. If I come back to this icon at the bottom of my screen and I right click on here, if I scroll down to Dock Widgets, you can see I get a list of options and I've got them all selected here. Let's say, for example, I deselect where it says Line. So I left click here and now that Line toolbar has disappeared from this widget dock. Now it's simple to put back. I simply come back to this left hand icon at the bottom of my screen here. I right click on it, come back to Dock Widgets and I can reselect line. So that's how you get your toolbars to appear on screen. And I'd really encourage you all to just have a go at dragging them across and having a little play with them, because it may well be that you, um, you discover new tools, you know, just have a little play, or what does this do and what does that do? These are useful sort of in playing around, you'll become familiar with the geography of the software and that'll help you to identify maybe some of the tools. For example, this one here is really useful. It's called Scale. Well, we're going to cover that comprehensively in a future episode. But for example, you might think, oh, Scale, that sounds interesting to me as a model maker. I wonder what that does and feel free to have a play with it. So that's how we turn those menus on and off. And I hope that answers your question fully, Kev. If it doesn't, or you've got any more, 
please drop them in the comments. I'll be delighted to hear from you. So the next question today came from Brian Yeomans. Now, Brian struggled to find the snap to grid icon um, on his screen. So it's down here. If you look at my mouse down here, sort of in the lower left hand region of the screen, it's this arrangement of um, green circles formatted in sort of a grid fashion. Now, if I left click on that, it becomes highlighted in, in blue and my snap to grid tool is now attached. So if I draw lines, you'll see they kind of magnetically attach themselves to the grid of dots. So why can't Brian see them and how can we make it so that he can see them? Well, Brian, probably the easiest thing to do is come to the top menu here where it says widgets, come down to toolbars. And if we scroll down, we'll see snap selection here. And I've got it highlighted left click to deselect it and you see it's gone. So that's now probably how your screen appears. We can come back here, toolbars, snap selection. And there we go. And it's come back. And again, just as uh, I think I mentioned previously, in fact, I might not have done actually, but if I didn't, we can grab that by clicking on that little row of dots and we can move that around the screen and we can put it wherever it suits us. I find it's quite useful down there. So Brian, I hope that answers your question. Thanks for sending it in. Now as a little addendum to Brian's question, and I think I maybe should have included this in answering Kev's question. This um, bit here where it shows our dock areas of, and their locations on the screen, that in itself is a toolbar, which I can bring up and I can float about. Now it could well be that when Kev or anybody else comes to sort of have a go at what I said, answering our first question, that they can't see that. And just as just as um, the snap to grid thing, if we come up here to widgets, um, toolbars, what we're looking for is this one here, dock areas. Now it may be that on your installation that is deselected and you can't see them. So come up back up here, um, toolbars, dock areas, and you can turn that on and off just as you can with any other toolbar. And once you've got it, you can put it wherever you want it to live. Now I tend to keep it down here and I try to keep my toolbars and this software fairly consistent so that they'll be in the same place in every video. But hopefully that should answer all the toolbar questions. If there are any more, do please let me know. Now the next thing I'd like to show you is a really useful skill and an excellent application for computer aided design. Recently, I've been spending a lot of time drawing out the track plan at Bexhill West. And I thought what I'd do is show you just one of the tools that I've used within that process. So I have on screen here, the Pico Streamline um, turnout plan um, for one of their E95 points, E96 and 95 points. Um, now these are freely available and you can download them from the Pico website and print them out and chop them out and stick them on your baseboard and, and play around with them and do your planning. However, we can do that on the computer too. So what I'm going to do is just take a, a screenshot of part of this, this, um, this PDF drawing. So to do that, I'm going to use the snipping tool. So if I come down here in Windows, snipping tool, I can select that. I have it actually permanently set up on my lower taskbar anyway. Click new. And then what we do is just drag a rectangle around the shape that we want to, uh, to use. So that will do. And that will come up as a screen capture. And what we can do is um, save as, and I'm going to call it Pico E. 95. There we go. So that's now got that image in our library. So having saved our image, we can come into LibreCAD, click File, Import, Insert Image. We can select that image that we'd saved previously, click Open, and it will ask us in the bottom of the screen here to specify a reference point. Now if I zoom out a little bit, 
you can see the there's a rectangle of its outline and we can just drop that anywhere we like on the screen. Now, because it's captured this image from the screen, we don't know its exact size. In fact, its exact size will depend on the screen resolution on your computer. So the first thing we need to do is to determine exactly how big this is. So we can do that with the dimensioning tool. In my case, I can choose one from the lower left toolbar here, or we can come up here, dimension, and I'm going to choose the horizontal tool. And now if I left click at the end of this rail here and left click here to the right, and it's worth zooming in to do this and get it really accurate. We've now got ourselves a measurement. So if I zoom in, we can have a look at that. 824.4155. So that is the measurement, 828 and a half millimeters long. Now, if I jump back to the Pico page for a second, we can see on here that that measurement should be 219.5. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, if I pull up my calculator and enter into it the 219.5, that's our target length, and divide that by 828.4155 gives us a scale factor of 0.2649, etc. So it's a scale factor of 0.265. So let's zoom back out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So having got our image on the screen there, if I select it, and now hit the scale tool that I mentioned earlier. It'll ask me down the bottom here to specify a reference point. Now we could choose anywhere we like, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna click randomly in the middle of the image. It asks us whether we want to delete the original, keep it, or make multiple copies. In this case, we want to delete the original. And in this box, I've gone ahead and I've entered the values for our scaling of 0.265 for the X a 0.265 for the Y. Click OK. And if I come up here to auto zoom, there we go, it appears. I don't know why, but sometimes you have to hit auto zoom to see your drawing. So if I now zoom in on what we have on the screen there, I should be able to use my horizontal dimensioning tool and if this is all worked to plan, this should be 219.5 millimeters long. Come up, and there we go, 219.1. So I'm out by 0.4 of a millimeter. Now the reason for that is very, very simple. I hadn't got my dimensioning tool. I didn't do that particularly accurately. In fact, if we have a look on the end here, we can see that's not lined up. So clearly I can adjust all of this and that, that will be correct. So when we first do our first measurement, which was I think 824, if we get those dimensioning points as accurately as possible, you'll find this is a really useful way of producing a nice scale um, version of that Pico point. Now, of course we could save this or we could copy and paste it many times over. We could combine it with other units that we could produce for curved points and crossings and goodness knows what else. And we can even draw our own track on here using the tools that I've shown you in previous episodes. So I thought that's worth showing just how we can scale an image. Now, what we could do, this could be the, a photograph of a building, for example. And if we knew the width of the building, we could scale that photograph to the dimensions that we might want for our model. And if that photograph was taken square on to the face of the building, we'd be able to scale the windows and things like that pretty accurately using this method. And I will cover that in a future episode. Anyway, for now, I thought that's a useful way of achieving the sort of accuracy that you um, might expect from something from like template, um, but with a bit more freedom in terms of laying these things out and about. Um, 
independently of the tools that are provided in regular track planning software. Now, it's not for everyone, but certainly learning how to use that scaling tool is really useful. Um, we could use it, for example, you might find a drawing online of a, of a building and it's in a different scale to that that you're working in. You might be working in four millimeter scale. You find a nice drawing of a wagon that's full size, for example. But you could use these same processes to scale that full size drawing down to four millimeter scale. Anyway, I hope that's useful. So that's it. I'm not going to go into any more today. It's a bit of a um, bit of a shorter episode, and but hopefully we've covered some useful skills there. Now, before I go, I just want to say a, a massive thank you to all the subscribers who've come on board recently. We're now nearly at 500, which is just amazing. Um, I never, <laughs> I never thought it'd get this big this quickly. So thank you very much indeed. Now I'm busy next week working on something quite impressive for the Bexhill West side of this channel, which I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. And then the week after I shall be away on holiday for a week. I'm spending some time in Yorkshire and I shall be having a train ride over the Ribblehead Viaduct, which I'm looking forward to, as well as a visit to the National Railway Museum before spending a little bit of time in Saltaire, which is a place I absolutely love. So if you know of anything in that sort of Yorkshire area that you think might be of interest to me, then do please let me know in the comment section and I'd be delighted to maybe chase up some of your suggestions. Anyway, that said, expect some hopefully quite exciting Bexhill West material very, very soon. And until next time, thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.